But today we're going to be hooking up Jim's inverters. And um, he's got two inverters that we're going to be running in parallel. And he's got these parallel kits. And these PIP inverters, I've got experience on hooking them up standalone. I don't have any experience doing them in parallel. So if you don't have any experience hooking these up in parallel, make sure you watch this episode because we'll all learn together and that makes it funner. So I got the plate, I got the screws out of the plate, and I'm going to take the plate out. There's not a lot of play in this uh, connector header here, and I need to, probably should get my glasses on too. I don't need to wear my glasses, I only I want to see something. That's me, I only need my glasses when I need to see. And that's the the one that was in there. This is the one we're putting in. That's the parallel kit. So now we'll put that header on. That's probably a power wire would be my guess. Slide that bugger in. So installing the parallel port's pretty easy. It's easier than I expected it to be. And then these are the parallel cables. There's two of these, which are the current sync cables, and then the two communications cables. So one of these will plug into each port. Same thing on these, one into each communication port. And then the inverters sync up, and that allows the the AC to be in phase because if it gets out of phase then things get real crazy you got one that's trying to push while one's pulling or you got one that they're 180 degrees out of phase so that keeps everything synced up real well so that's got one we're going to do the other one then we'll reinstall them put the cables on and hopefully by then Jim will have the DC wires run and we'll hook them up and see how it goes Okay, so that's got this one programmed. What I'm doing is they give you this little sheet here that tells you you have to turn it on, hit a sequence of up and enters until it says PAL and then you turn it back on. And I've done that and it says now that it's putting out 120 volts and I should see HS in the center of the screen, which it does. So now I turn it off and repeat the process with the other unit. So we're going to turn that guy off and now we're going to turn on the other guy over here. <laughs> Come on. 
guess I ought to turn it over. It's upside down to them, isn't it? No, that's right. Yeah. So now I'm going to push and hold the enter key for three seconds till zero zero comes up. And there it is. And then I do up till we get to 28. And there it is right there. And now I turn the switch off and then I hit the enter button. And then I do up until we see PAL. And there it is. Hit enter. And turn it back on. And then we should see HS come up in the middle of the screen where this is right here. So we're going to let it boot up and get, get all situated and then it'll tell us what it thinks. Okay, so it's, we're making 120 volts. HS is what we want to see. Now we turn it back off. And then it'll take it a minute to power down. And then what we do is we turn the one on that we want to be master first. And it makes absolutely no difference to us whatsoever. So, then the master unit will have HS on it and then the other unit should say SL. So on this other one over here where it says HS, we'll turn this one on and then it should say HS. Then we'll turn the other one on and then it should say SL for slave. So this is the master unit here. Okay. And you can see it says HS. We'll wait until it says it's putting out 120 volts and then we'll turn the other one on. Okay. Now we're going to turn on this other one. And then it should come up and say SL in the middle of the screen. And it does. So that says it's a slave unit. Everything's working perfect. And we're ready to start turning on the uh, PV panels. Okay. So what I'm going to do is on this one, because the top, this top breaker panel goes to this one, right? Uh, yes, sir. So I'm going to go up. The batteries are 25.1 volts, which is good. And uh, okay, this is the PV input, which is zero. And then it should start coming up and saying that it sees solar panels. Hopefully. Yep. Solar panel just came on over here. So it sees the solar panels. Now, you see this little thing over here came on. It says it's charging the batteries. And it, we're charging the batteries with 12 watts, 17 watts. And that'll keep climbing until it's gotten the maximum power point. Now we're going to do the same thing on this other side. And you can see that we've got, I'm going to put it over to PV on this side here. Whoops. Okay, input for PV, zero watts. We got the little picture of the solar panel on. So it sees that it has uh, solar panels attached to it. And you can see our wattage is starting to come up. So now this guy is also charging the batteries. Watch power default password. When you're not sure, Google. <laughs> okay, so now we're logged in. If it, if it gets overloaded, we want it to restart automatically, right? Yes, sir. Because you don't want to have to go out there and hit the reset button. Mm -mm. Especially since I don't know where it is yet.
Okay, output source priority. It says utility. Okay. Battery type is AGM. So it's already set for that. Okay, so your back to grid voltage is set at 23 volts. 30 amps AC charging current. Back to discharge voltage is 27. So it'll, it'll charge you up to 28.2 volts, which is your bulk, and then your float charge is 27. Okay, something that I'm, I want to say that I've noticed on a parallel configuration on these inverters. <clears throat> I hooked up to the primary inverter first, and I programmed it, and uh, gave it all the settings that we wanted it to have. Then I went to the secondary inverter to start programming it, and all those settings were already there. So what I installed as settings on the first or the primary inverter migrated to the other inverter automatically. So apparently they communicate pretty well together. Um, so setting the one up, set them both up, and Jim's up and running, he's got AC, he's Yay! charging the batteries. Um, so I expect to see a video here in three or four days with him using his drill in here and running off his off his uh, standalone system here. So That's good right. Jake. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you, My thank friend. you, thank you, thank you.